Jay Janinder Pranam, everybody. We're just going to get started in a couple of minutes. So sit tight and we'll begin soon. Jijinindan Pranam, everybody. For anyone who's just joining, we're going to be getting started momentarily. So just sit tight. Hi everyone, for anyone who just joined, we're gonna be getting started momentarily. Give us two more minutes and then we'll get started.
Tuning in there, everybody. So I think we can get started. Like we did yesterday, we're gonna start off with a quick quiz. Again, this quiz doesn't count. Um, just it's to test your understanding and to see the best that you can do. So don't worry about getting everything right. In a second, I'm going to screen share the quiz link um, and you'll be able to access the quiz on your own. So while the quiz is up, then at that same time, Dejanti will get started with the lecture. Um, so do try to get it done towards the beginning, but no rush if you can't get it done right off the bat. Give me two minutes and it'll be up on the screen. There you go. So there is the quiz link. If everybody wants to go ahead and visit that link very quickly, um, we're also going to drop the same link in the chat for people's convenience. So again, take the time to visit the quiz um, and try completing it to the best of your ability. All right, Dejanti, if you want to get started, go ahead. Okay, uh, Pranam everybody, and Bada uh, hopefully Shatama Hasho, so uh, Shatama. And uh, before we begin, let's count 12 knockers and then do a pratna. Uh, uh, so please join your hands. Bar knocker in your mind. Namo Arihantanam, Namo Sittanam, Namo Ayaryanam, Namo Vajayanam, Namo Loe Savasanam, Eso Panchanamukaro, Sabbapavapanasano, Mangalam Chasavesim, Padamam Havai Mangalam, Nivana Mange Varjana Kapam, Panasya Se Sakvai Dapam, Mayam Jiranam Sharanam Buhanam, Namami Necham Tijagapahanam, Bodhagadam Supadapadavi Nirapura Viramam, Jiva Hinsa Viralalahari, Sangamaga Hadeham, Chula Velam Guru Gamamani Sankulam Dura Param Saram Vira Gamajalanidim Sadaram Sadu Seve Mangalam Bhagavan Hero Mangalam Gautama Prabhu Mangalam Suli Bhatraja Jaina Dharmos Mangalam Pranam everybody Welcome to the third day of Padushan. And uh, to begin, <clears throat> day three of Padushan, we uh, have al already been looking at the Kartavyas that we are supposed to be doing. That is what we have been uh, talking and discussing over the last two days and that is exactly what is going to be discussed even today. 
on the first day of pollution we did the five kartavyas that are supposed to be done during the pollution itself the first four before the samatsari pratikraman and the last one just after in the next week or on that day of samatsari uh, after the pratikraman we are supposed to do the last one that is chaitya pari party yesterday we saw the 11 kartavyas that are supposed to be done in the entire year whenever it is possible by us today we are going to look what falls under the category of others and we have paushad now what is paushad pavesu posah vayam is taken from manha jinanam it is a sutra uh, i hope we all know our sutras uh, if not so we should try and learn these sutras because if we don't know the sutras then kind of we are disrespecting the gandhar bhagwans because the gandhar bhagwans make the sutras and the artha is given by bhagwan himself bhagwan in his samavasara never says any sutra he just gives us the artha the meaning so if we don't know the meaning we are disrespecting bhagwan himself and if we don't know the sutras then it is showing disrespect towards our gandhar bhagwan so as i said this yesterday too i am trying to repeat myself that shuddha bhakti is one of our kartavyas to learn gathas is uh, a wonderful thing to do even if we can learn only half a line that is one fourth of a line rather of one gatha that is even then we should try and do it for six entire months and even after that if we can't that is also okay but to try and do agathas is a must now a shravak should do a paushad on parvatithi Uh, yes most of us do not know the meaning of paushad and uh, we are going to discuss paushad in detail so just to wait along but before i start that i'm just going to tell you how important it is it is mentioned as i said in manha jinanam sajjhay that we should take paushad on every parvat tithi now what is tithi tithi is uh, according to the lunar calendar when we have patham the two athams and the two chaudas all these five days we are supposed to observe uh, a few set of rules like not eating greens to not uh, do any kind of aram samharam that anartha dan that we had been discussing so we must try and avoid those things any sinful activities because on our tithi day generally we bind our ayushya that is where we are going to go in our next lives for everybody who doesn't know there are eight karmas that we keep binding at every second yes but uh, sorry there are eight karmas there that we can bind but out of which we bind seven karmas at every second and the eighth karma being ayushya that is deciding which life where and how long will we live in our next life this we bind only once in our entire lifetime so this being a very important decision in the sense it kind of tells us as to where we are going to go in our next life and for that uh, we need to be on our high alert because we really don't want to go into a durgati in the sense to narak or tiryanch gati or something like that so we must be on high alert on tithis because generally ayushya this karma is bound on a tithi and this karma ayushya karma is just bound once in a lifetime the other seven karmas we keep repeating we keep binding them now regarding uh, paushad it is also mentioned in atichar that parvatithi paushad lidho nahi meaning ki if we do not take this paushad on parvatithi then we are flowing and flowing na mate we kind of say michami dukram we kind of say sorry in our pratikraman so instead of being sorry every time it's best we start doing it it is said that if we can't do paushad on every tithi which we are supposed to do as shravaks we must do paushad 
at least once in a year even when we take bar vrat now what are these these vrats are like vows they are kind of telling us to not uh, hurt anybody by killing or mentally hurt them or verbally hurt them not to steal not to kind of do any kind of uh, robbery or something like that so all those things are coming under bar vrat there are 12 different vows that a shravak needs to take and in that too there is a mention of paushad so just trying to show you how important this paushad is even though this paushad is so important bhagwan never takes paushad because he doesn't believe in doing anything half way paushad is la- is like training for a sad- becoming a sadhu you know so when you want to take diksha yesterday we had uh, a question as to what is diksha so this paushad is mini diksha it is a practice of diksha so we we can't take diksha diksha as we kind of had summed up yesterday uh, is a very difficult uh, thing to do and it is a lifetime thing to do so being so difficult we as shravaks are supposed to do paushad which is a practice which is a you know training for sadhu life and this paushad can be of different durations chausat prahari that is 64 prahar what is a prahar 3 hours makes one prahar okay so uh 64 prahari means doing it for 8 days this pajushan time generally so many in india on the very first day they go to mara saheb and they take this paushad it is like a samayik a samayik is supposed to be for 48 minutes whereas this paushad can be for as big as long as 8 days or it could be aho ratri now what does aho ratri means the let's break the word ahan plus ratri ahan means day and ratri means night so day plus night so that is aho ratri meaning night and day for one night and one day uh that is also the second duration for pausha the third duration is only 12 hours uh, aho ratri was 24 hours and ahan is ratri uh, sorry ahan is day so 12 hours of day meaning you go in the morning at sunrise to the mara saheb in the upashray and there is a set of vidhi that is there is a set of rules that we need to there's a procedure that we need to follow and when we do that we kind of a temporarily becoming a monk a sadhu and we have to live there with them and do what they do and at night after sunset we are free to come back home if we take the ahan the day paushad but there is also another paushad which is called the ratri paushad and this paushad is also for a duration of 12 hours this begins around 5ish before sunset we go to the upashray do the set of procedure uh, and then we kind of stay there in the upashray and do swadhyay now this doesn't mean we can go there and go off to sleep you remember the ratri jago yes that we had yesterday's kartavya that you have to wake up the entire night uh, doing some religious activity so yes this paushad kind of uh, is uh, ratri jago you are supposed to be up till as long as you can 12 1 into the night and count naukar wali or uh, do some jap dhyan or uh, understand something from the sadhus or the sadhvis that you are with this ratri jagran can also be from yesterday's ratri jagran is where i am continuing it could be also done on the day that kalpa sutra is taken home today many people take the kalpa sutra home today is the day when there is a ghee boli that is uchhamni that is dev dravya vruti and they take this kalpa sutra home and they do puja uh, of the kalpa sutra with vasakshep they keep it in a very nice place they decorate their house they have music and everything that is uh, played and
and uh, that is soft music and a lot of people do a lot of dharma kriya they do bhakti they do bhavna and uh, that is how they spend a lot of their time in the night sometimes they keep dharma ni quiz something related to uh, dharma and so uh, they kind of uh, spend the entire night or at least half the night doing this so that is ratri jagran and also on the day that they take barsa sutra home some people call all their friends family home to do darshan and when they go home they have ratri jago also on the parna day when they take the parna home you can do the ratri jagran so these are certain days where as is people are up because they are supposed to be up when they have such auspicious things in their house so many people in the house take turns waking up the night and while you are up you can do some kind of job or something like that and yes to return back to paushad this ratri praushad also is a part of this ratri jagran wherein you should be up for major part of the night wherein you can do some dharma kriya oh sorry yes paushad should be taken after sunrise and finished before the next day sunrise and uh, <clears throat> if the sun uh, if the paushad is taken after sunrise then he should complete it in eight prahars now there are four things that we need to observe in paushad that is aahar sharir satkar brahmacharya abrahma uh, samarab tyag what does all these for me ahar ahar is food related on the day that we have paushad if we cannot do a complete fast that is an upavas that is absolutely no eating just having some boiled water if we can't do that the minimum tap that needs to be done is ekashna and ekashna should be done only after 1115 around puri mad that is around 1115 depending on the day yes so that is one thing that we need to observe when we do a paushad that you can't eat before 115 you can't even have water before that time that is puri mad pachkhan even if you are doing a fast that is a complete upvas even then the what you are not permitted to have water before puri mad pachkhan then the next thing that we need to observe when we are doing paushad is sar sharir satkar that is dressing up related and we cannot bathe before we go to the upashray to take a pachkhan uh, paushad because if we bathe we are kind of killing or harming the one sense lives of water because jainism believes that water has one sense lives besides the bacteria that are present in it so leaving the bacteria out the bacteria are two sense but the water itself is living and that water life we are killing if we are taking a bath so when we do paushad we try and say that today i am not going to harm anybody for my sake and so you go to the upashray without taking a bath and you need not do puja on that day so bath is not necessary we as jains are allowed to take a bath in the morning only because we are to do puja mara sides the sadhus the sadhus that we are going to talk about their life this is exactly replicating their life in one day the paushad is kind of replicating their lives so they don't have a bath at all because they are not supposed to be doing puja they have vowed that they will not hurt any any single micro organism also so they in their entire life do not touch uh, unboiled water and that's why they are not even they are they don't have a bath because that would be hurting the one sense lives then brahmacharya celibacy related when you take a pausha just like samayak you cannot touch the opposite sex so if a male takes pausha he is not allowed to touch any female and if a female takes a pausha she is not allowed to take touch any male then am arambh samarambh tyag meaning 
we are going to be refraining for this particular day or eight days or three days or whatever amount of time period that we are taking the paushat from all kind of sinful activities. This includes thinking about anything that is going on at home, talking about it, giving uh, advice, um, checking on things, uh, you know, that we may have left, uh, asked people to do after we left for Pausha. No, none of these things can be done by us. We are actually supposed to live uh, like a monk and stay in the Upashray and completely focus only on to religious activities. We can't even actually to be uh, to talk about it uh, in a very strict manner. So we can't even call a mother uh, as mummy. You know, you're supposed to call her by her name because now the relation between you and your mom is no more as you are now taking diksha, a mini diksha of one day, half a day, half a day, I mean 12 hours, that is either only the day from sunrise to sunset or the night that is before sunset to sunrise. Yes. In this, we are supposed to be doing Iriya Samiti. Now, what is Iriya Samiti? It is like kind of taking care of how we walk, how we tread. So when we walk after taking Paushad, as we have vowed that today, in this day, we are not going to hurt any kind of life. So when we walk, maybe we stamp on an ant or a small little uh, insect that could be passing or could be in our way. So, so that we don't step on it, we kind of keep our eyesight three and a half hands away. One hand is from your elbow to the tip of your finger. So three and a half hands far, you kind of put your eyesight there and keep taking care um, of the place between your legs and that point. So you keep checking if you are going to be stamping on anything, anything moving, then you kind of are aware of it being there and you don't step on it. You kind of take it from the path so that nobody else also steps on it. So this is the way we are supposed to walk with our eyesight down. We can't be talking and having a gala time and walk or uh, walk about or looking into our mobiles. Of course, in a poucher, you're not even supposed to be have, having or touching a mobile uh, because electricity as well as cells are not supposed to be touched by us once we take this poucher. It is exactly like a Samaik, yes? But this is a longer Samaik. Then, when we walk, we must, of course, take care of the moving lights and also take care of anything such it. What is such it? So, chitta. Chit means soul, life. Sa means with, with life. And a chit, a chit means without life. So we cannot walk on anything that has life. That, as we discussed already, includes any microorganisms, any ant or anything. But it also includes mud, water and plant life. Mud in the sense a mucky surface because it could have life. But if it is a paved uh, thing, then yes, of course, you can walk on it. The paved thing, when the machines went over it, um, all the life that it had is no more there. So yes, because uh, Jainism believes that this mud mucky thing that is there and people haven't tread on it, then it still has life. Water has life and plant, of course, has life. So we are not supposed to be walking on it because we'll be hurting them. That is why. So of course, we can't walk on water, so we can't walk during the rains. These are all the things that we are supposed to take care of uh, while walking. This is called Iriya Samiti. A Sadhu Bhagwant always observes Iriya Samiti, and especially when he is moving from one place to the other. And that moving from one place to the other is called Vihar. Vihar means walking from one place to the other. They observe Iriya Samiti, and these are the things that need to be taken care of. Also, one cannot go beyond 100 steps outside the Upashray at night. This is only if you're doing the Aho Ratri, means the night and day Paushad or the Ratri Paushad. If you're doing either of these Paushads, also the eight day Paushad, of course. 
then after we do the pratikraman in the evening in the night evening devasiya pratikraman after that we are not supposed to walk beyond 100 steps outside the upashray the our limit our limit in any of the directions is only 100 steps so asadhu bhagwan on a daily basis doesn't move out beyond 100 steps from the upashray also one cannot sit now walk on sofas this is all also regarding walking so it is all included under iriya samiti one cannot walk or sit on sofas because the sofas have air pockets in it cotton or anything in dunlop whatever it kind of presses down so it has these air pockets and if we sit on a soft surface the air the life we jainism of course believes that there is life one sense life in air too so when we sit on a sofa we will be hurting the life in the air, the Vayu Kai. And so in Paushad, we are supposed to sit only on hard surfaces and not on sofas. Yes. Then one should walk with a Dandasan. Now, what is a Dandasan? A Dandasan, you know, everybody knows what a Charavlo is that we use in Samai. Yes, the Charavlo has a small stick with some woolen, white woolen uh, strings, you know, uh, uh, which are attached in the beginning. So a dandasan is a longer stick with the same white woolen strings attached at the end. Now this dandasan is long because when we are standing, we can use it. Now if I have a small short stick, then I need to bend to use it and that would become difficult. So for the night, we have a long stick so I can use it while I'm standing. Now uh, at night, we are not allowed to use electricity in an upashray because we again have remember the pledge we said we will not hurt any kind of living organism so yes light electricity has one sense life according to uh, jainism and so we do not touch electricity we do not have any kind of light not even a lamp uh, in the upashray and so if we get up in the night to use uh, to uh, use the washroom or something so then we to go up to the washroom we use this dandasan this long stick with the woolen uh, strings at the end to switch the floor and we reach this place why do we switch the floor so that if there is any small microorganisms and since we haven't had the lights on and we can't see if there is so we just switch it off with this um, charola that they can move away and we have a clear passage to the washroom. So that is about this. Then also we need to wear a shawl during the calmly time. Calmly means a shawl. Okay. So this calmly, this woolen shawl is what we wear. Ghadi is 24 minutes. So uh, certain times in summer, it is two ghadi, that is 48 minutes in uh, before and after sunri uh, sunrise and sunset. In winter, it is char ghadi and in uh, uh, monsoon, it is six ghadi uh, before and after sunset and sunrise. One ghadi is 24 minutes. We need to wear a shawl. Why do we wear this shawl? Because Jain geography is very different from the geography that we know as geography. Uh, so this in this geography, as I was talking, remember the Nandishwar Dweep we talked about that, you know, we stay in the center island and then there is a water body around this island. The first island, of course, is a round circle wherein we live. Then there is a water body and then there is a land, water, land and so on. The eighth one is Nandishwar Dweep. And in these concentric circles, there is one water body from which lots of tamaskai. They are tam their name is tamaskai. They are again uh, a jeev. They are alive. They are living. These small living beings kind of come out from this water and are thrown on both sides of that water body. So some of that life falls into our place here too 
so if we do not cover ourselves with a shawl when we are in the open if we have a ceiling on our head there is no need to cover our uh, heads but if we are walking outside in the open before and after sunrise depending on the summer winter monsoon two ghadi four ghadi six ghadi one ghadi 24 minutes if we don't wear that shawl during pausha then what happens those uh, jeeves would kind of bang with our head and die but if we have a woolen shawl on our heads then they have a safer landing they have a softer landing and they you know because the woolen thing has those small little uh, strings and in which in in between they have little air in it so these lights come and settle on the woolen shawl and that kind of uh, protects them and uh, some of course die but then they are protected much better than hitting your head our head so that is why this kamli is also worn by a sadviji or a sadhu bhagwan next one these were all related to iriya samiti as we saw all were related to walking when we walk outside the upashray we need a kamli we need a giant torch which is called dandasan uh, it's not a torch it's got no light but it's just a way to say it that this dandasan acts like a torch in the night it kind of moves the lives that are uh, on our way in our path so that they can move to safety yes the other one was we can't sit on soft sofa seats or uh, cotton beds uh, we cannot take more than 100 steps at night and we have to uh, see you know vision or our vision should be three and a half hands away so that on the way while walking we do not step on anything not even mud water or plant life or even pain their lives like the ants one cannot walk during rain so this is all under Iriya Samiti. Let's go on to the next one. That is Bhasha Samiti. This is regarding Uchar. Uchar means speech. This is regarding speech. Bhasha. Bhasha itself tells you that we now we're going to talk about how to talk in Pajushan. Sorry, in Paushad. So we are supposed to hold the Mupati as the diagram, the picture shows us. The hold the Mupati four fingers away so that the uh, when we talk, the air from our mouth that comes out kind of settles on this Mupati. As I already told you, air Vayukai has life and that life shouldn't bang with the air outside. And so they can settle on this cloth, this Mupati that we have. Um, we are holding in front of our mouth yes and also when we talk spit comes out from our mouth and that spit kind of settles on this mupati and can dry off otherwise again in the spit there would be a lot of insects uh, that is uh, five cents insects a uh, five cents lives can take birth there okay so that's why we hold this mupati in front of our mouth and also uh, that spit can uh, will not land on any kind of gnan na upkaran what do i might mean by gnan na upkaran i mean books pen or anywhere else where it would uh, be disrespecting the books so uh, we should uh, refrain from talking without a mupati in front of our mouths when we are especially when we are in paushad and that is how marasabs live all the time yes one should say uh, yes when you talk the language has to be nice you cannot use abusive language anger is a complete no no uh, in your tone has to be nice and subtle with respect for anything we cannot order somebody to bring us water if we are doing a paushad we and if we are doing a complete fast we cannot say oh oh where is my water you all haven't put the water for me because see we can't boil our own water we need somebody uh, who takes care of our water and comes and drops it so just in case they forget we can't order them to do that for us but we can definitely request them and uh, talk politely and ask them, you know, the water hasn't come if you could do the needful. So that is how we talk. Then uh, now the next one is about 
Eshna Samiti. This is the third Samiti. There are five Samitis. Now we are talking about the Eshna Samiti. This is regarding Ahar. Ahar means food. Okay. So now what kind of food can we eat and what kind of food can we not eat in a Paushad? We because we are still Shravaks and we have just taken a Paushad, when in Paushad and if I am doing an Ekashna, I can go to my own house for food. But if it is a Mara Sahib, he goes from door to door, house to house. And how he takes the Gochri, we shall be seeing in a bit. First, let us do how we, if in a Paushad, have to eat, what are we supposed to do? So we can go to our own house for food. And when we enter the house, we're supposed to say Jaina Mangal. Like when Mara Sahib comes, what does he say or she say? They say Dharmala. So we know that Mara Sahib has approached our door. But when we go after doing Paushad, if we go to our own house for food or to anybody's house for food, we say Jaina Mangal. And if they say Padharo, we can go inside and uh, say Padharo, Vapro, something like that. Then we can or if you know, if you go to a relative's house and if they say, Are, how come you here? Why are you here? And you have said Jaina Mangal and they don't know this Jaina Mangal and they say, oh, how come you here today? All of a sudden, then that day you cannot rightfully eat. You have to take Patkan and your day is over. So we must know the meaning of Jaina Mangal. If somebody approaches our door and says Jaina Mangal, the first thing that we say is Padharo or uh, and when they sit down on the patlo and we serve them, uh, we say Vapro. And even when a Mara Sahib comes, they say Dharmalab and we are supposed to say Padharo, Labapjo. Okay. Now, we cannot eat anything that is touching Satchit. Meaning sa chitta, the same word again, that if something is touching which has life, like supposing there is uh, fruits, okay, and uh, milk or uh, let's say your dal or whatever you've made is touching the fruits, then you cannot eat that dal. Even Mara Sahib will not take it. So if you are in India and if Mara Sahibs are coming over to your place for Gochari, Gochari means to take arms. Then if they are coming to your place, please see that you haven't put even water, kachu pani, unboiled water next to the food that they're supposed to be uh, taking. The offerings that you're going to give uh, to them, that shouldn't be kept in a place where it can be touching anything that has life. Okay, so that has to be observed by us. And if it is a Mara side, then we cannot make anything for them. Everything that is made for us is okay for them to take, but anything made specially for them, they will definitely not take. Really, we must take care of this too. Uh, if we are aware that some Mara Sahib is going to come, we must make something uh, for all of us in the house. And it is because of us that we are making. We mustn't even have it in the mind that, oh, today Mara Sahib is coming and so I'm making this. Because otherwise, the usage of gas or the chopping of the vegetables or whatever you do, a badhanu pap, all the sin will be kind of uh, also uh, shared by the Mara Sahib. Because he uh, is not so, because he is the reason why you are cooking, right? So that's why. Now, we cannot if we are doing paushad in paushad, it is a strict rule that we cannot eat green vegetables, pulses means akhu kathor, chopped. You know the. Uh, Things that are already split into two, yes, we can have all the dals, but not the whole kathols, the whole pulses. They are supposed to be avoided in paushad. Green vegetables are avoided in paushad. No hard thing in the sense, khakra or papad, dhanadar, anything when you put in the mouth and it makes a sound is supposed to be uh, not edible in paushad by us. But Mara said they can borrow all of these things, yes. But for us, we are not supposed to have any of them. Anything that's a mm, 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 which makes a sound when you bite, like kakra, like papad, like dhanani dal, then those things are supposed to be avoided in Paushad. 
Um, and uh, yes, I talked about uh, cannot eat anything that is touching such it. Now, um, this is for us, right? That when we go to somebody's house, uh, we just go to one house, sit there, complete our ekashna, and come back to the upashray. But when Mara Sahib goes, he doesn't go to one house. He goes from house to house, hops from one place to the other, taking very little, little, little from each house. As I said, anything made for him, he doesn't accept. So nothing is supposed to be made for him. It is only for your house. So when some Mara Sahib comes and kind of starts taking everything that he needs, then you might have to cook again. And if you cook anything again, again, the sin would be carried forward to him too as you are cooking again because he took all the food away yes jainism is very very minute very very um everything has a very very fine line there so yes uh mara sahib uh, will never take everything from one place he will take little little so you are not going to have to recook anything for yourself or for the house um uh, this uh, taking of arms from different different houses is called go chari go chari okay uh, let's split the word go chari go means cow and chari it like charva jai means uh, eating grass have you ever seen a cow eating grass a cow never eats or pulls out all the grass from one spot takes little from here then it walks it takes little from there and walks and takes a little from the other place so just like um, uh, a cow, Mara Sahib also takes little, little from every house. And that's why it is kind of uh, related with go chari. Okay. Now let's go on to the next one. Adana bhanda matta nikhevana samiti. Let me pronounce this again. Adana bhanda nikhevana samiti. Adana Bhanda Matta Nikhevana Samiti, that is uh, Achar. Now, we are going to talk about what they are supposed to be doing. How, they, how do they live? What is their uh, Kriya or their uh, doings in the entire day? What do they need to observe? What are the rituals that they do in the entire day? So, one must use a Charolo. So in Paushad, one must use a charola while opening and closing windows. Now, when I open a window, yes, I must first switch, switch the place. Supposing it's a sliding, so the railing, I must switch the place with the charolo because what if in the railing there is any ant? So, so that no ant, no spider, nobody can die uh, when I move the sliding of my window. You need to swish this uh, railing, okay? Now, sometimes there are these doors. So when I close a door, I need to swish this entire uh, or closing of the door, the hinge, hinge bit, because here we sometimes could be a spider, could be even a lizard that may be there. And when I close the door, it may die. So we look into such minute things. So when we take paushad, we are supposed to observe this, that we cannot open and close doors and windows without swishing that area. And Mara Sahibs do it every time they uh, open and close a window. Then... One must do padilehan of clothes and uddi twice a day. Now, what is this? Padilehan means actually, padilehan means, you know, opening each material and looking at it from top to bottom. And why do we look for it? Look, in, look at it because ke, there isn't any life in it. Na? I mean, you know, I had left my clothes here. And what if an ant had decided to crawl inside or a spider crawled inside or a small little cockroach went inside my clothes and when I tried to wear it and I'm putting my hand through it or I'm just trying to wear it and by mistake, I kill it. So, this, so that's why we need to do padilehan of all the things that belong to us. Now, when I went for my Uddan, say, I mean, my Paushad, I take a, a set of a pair of clothes, right? And another changing pair. So I am supposed to take and also a sleeping uh, thing. This sleeping thing, I'll talk about it uh, in a bit. 
So I take my Santhara, it's called a Santhara. I take that, I take a bed sheet for it also. So all those things that I'm going to use in the day when I'm doing the Paushad, I need to check morning and night. So twice in the day. So as soon as I take my Paushad in the morning, I need to check it. And as soon as I finish the Paushad in the evening, I need to check it. Even if I don't finish the Paushad and I'm going to continue it through the night, I need to check it in the night again and in the morning for any bugs that could have entered my clothes. And not only do I check all the clothes that were lying on the floor, but I also remove all my clothes that I'm wearing and I check for them too for any kind of bug. Isn't this super? To be so, so careful about all these small, small bugs and lives. Um, yes, right now we might feel, okay, come on, you know, on my clothes, are you serious? There could be any ant and I'm going to kill it. Why do I really need to check this twice? But trust me, my sister, she has taken Diksha. Uh, uh, do we have a picture of her? Or if we don't right now, then in some time we shall put it up for you. For everybody to see, uh, she is Dipti Ben. She has been coming to the States uh, many times and uh, for all uh, discourses for Padushan as well as besides that for Jaina and uh, she is my uh, sole guide for anything that I'm saying here today and she has uh, after taken uh, afterwards she has taken Diksha uh, before 10 years and uh, when she took Diksha of course she does this Padilehan twice a day and she tells me Teju you won't believe there has been many many times that I have found small small insects on the clothes that I am wearing because they just climb they sit on the floor right so they just climb onto you and it feels so nice when you're able to save even one right so this you may be checking it ev checking every day but you may find one bug just once in a way but saving that is a big thing just like you know when you cross a road you look to the left you took, look to the right not every time are you going to meet with an accident, but you always look before you cross. The same way Padi Lehan is to be done morning, night, morning, night, every time. So yes, uh, this is regarding uh, Ubdi. Ubdi is all these clothes that I took for my day, for the entire day, for the Pausha that I'm going to uh, observe and all the things that I need. So that is called Ubdi and Padi Lehan, as I already told you, it means looking at everything and you know you have to turn it around and you have to look at it just like uh, you would to a mupati when we take samayak how do we turn the mupati three times and then we do it on our hands and everything there is a reason for all those things well uh, you know it's a detailed explanation we, we will do it some other time but yes just like we do mupati we are supposed to do all our clothes but mupati is a little longer and uh, this updi, this uh, padi lehan of our clothes and the sleeping material is a little shorter. Uh, I'll just Shanti. take a break. Yes, yes. a break Did right now. Can we show the picture of, um, of Dipti auntie? And if you want to speak to a little bit about when this picture was taken and what's happening in it. Yes, uh, here uh, she, this is just one day prior to her diksha. And uh, she was in Surat, that's where her diksha took place. And she was addressing a group of around 8,000 people that night. It was around 12 in the night and she was giving her last speech as a sansari. And the next morning was her diksha. And uh, yes, so uh, her name was Dipti Ben uh, before she took diksha. And after diksha, um, she was called Hem Yasha Shriji. Hem Yasha Shriji Mara Sahib. And this was in Surat 10 years back. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. And for everybody else, right, taking Diksha is no easy accomplishment. That's like something that takes a lot of willpower. It's a really, really big decision to make. And so to even be in that position to consider Diksha means a lot. It means that you're headed in the right direction. They always say that the best thing you can do with this human life is take Diksha. And so if it is possible, that is definitely something all of us should strive for. But that being said, I'm going to quickly screen share our regular slide that 
talks about doing the 14 niyams. We're going to be taking a little bit of a break at this time. And again, I'd want everybody to um, take a chance to take niyams for today, figure out what restraints you want to have during the course of the day. I know last time we talked about reflection and making sure at the end of the night, you're thinking, what do I do the next day? Or did I fulfill my niyams for today? So for instance, if I said, today, I'm only going to wear two pairs of shoes, then tonight, before I go to sleep, I should think, did I only wear two pairs of shoes? Did I make my niyam happen or not? And if I did, then that's really good for me. But if I didn't, that's okay, too. I just have to remember to be extra careful next time to make sure that I don't cross that limit. So that's one thing I wanted to mention about reflection. The second thing is some of you might be thinking, why do we have to do this every day? The niyams I took yesterday are gonna be the same niyams I take today. But think about it. If say you said yesterday, you're gonna use five pairs of shoes, but you only use three pairs of shoes, then maybe you don't need a five pairs of shoes limit. Maybe today you wanna to take a limit of only three pairs of shoes. And so by cutting things down slowly, we actually get more out of a niyam because it's making us further restraint. So keep that in mind. If something was super easy yesterday, then how can you make it a little bit more challenging? And do you think you can meet that challenge for the day? So that being said, I'm going to leave the slide up. We're going to reconvene at about 1237. I'll read a bunch of them that you drop in the chat. Again, I love doing that. So please, please, please drop what names you plan on doing in the chat today. Um, and then we'll get back onto the lecture. So again, this is just a break. The lecture will continue after we all take names. I'll drop the link in the chat and I will see you guys then. For anyone who just joined, we're currently taking a five minute break and everybody is taking niyams or daily vows. The link to the niyams is in the chat as well as on the screen. And in about three to four minutes, we're gonna go ahead and read some of the niyams that people have taken to everybody else to inspire others. Um, and then that'll be our break. So the lecture will resume in about five minutes, but at this point, everyone is taking niyams.
Great, so I think we could start sharing some of these. Meha and Sanya already set limits and took the names with their family. That's great to hear. Shob is limiting his video game time and he's also going to do that today. And he's also gonna to try to do Chovier today. So that means no eating or drinking after sunset. Really great job. Ruthie finished all the niyam she took. Good job again, that reflection is so important. So if everything yesterday was easy or if some parts were easy, see if you can restrict them a little bit more. Shlok is doing tap every day. That's awesome, restraint of food and meals. Meha and Sanya, one of them is doing a pass today again. Kuhu anamodna. Kia Cheda is, she won't go into the car and she's going to do tap. Sanya is doing one, four, five, 11, and 13. So five separate niyams, really great job. Arya will do Arti and 12 no karma there today. Sanya is doing seven ekashan and one of us. Wow, that's a really, really great goal. I hope you see it through. Ruthvi is gonna do all the niyams as she said. Ritika has taken Pachkan of three Samaks a day for eight days. That's amazing. Samak is one of the best things that we can do. Janik will walk barefoot, not walk on grass, and he's doing Vyashnu. Veer will take numbers four, five, seven, 10, and 14 today. Ariha is not going to drink on gold water, not step on grass, and also do number seven. And she will also do number nine. Really great job. Gia is going to drink boiled water, not walk on grass, and wear only two types of footwear. Freakin will do almost all of them, it seems, I think, except for number three. Really great job. Rohini will do limited consumption of living beings. So she's going to start off with one name for today, and that's really good. Again, start off with one and work your way up. Maria is doing a kashna. Rohini will drink boiled water. Vihan's also doing a kashna. We have a whole lot of tapasvis in this chat. Aryan will do two Akashnu and a Biashnu and not walk on grass. I think I must missed a message earlier, but Thej is planning on doing Attai and he's on day three, so we wish him well. Um, Vihan will be drinking both water. San Sanaya is doing Tap every day. Jasmine is going to do all 14. Um, Rohini's entire family is doing Biashnu, which is super cool. Janvi is limiting her time on technology. Um, or rather Jainam is, which is a really, really great goal to have. We don't realize how much time we spend on our phones and on the TV and on iPads and such. Arav and Anvay are doing Biashnu. Rishi's gonna limit his screen time. Again, screen time is a really big one. That's a good way to start. Aryan's gonna be doing Upas on Samvatsari. That's awesome. See if you can take some smaller vows leading up to Samvatsari day. So you can also practice restraint on those days before. Um, what is tap? So that's a good question. So tap is, I guess the English translation is austerity. So something that puts you through some kind of hardship. There are internal kinds of tap and external kinds of tap. The way that people are referring to tap right now and the way it's usually referred to is some kind of fasting. So there's different kinds of tap and fasting you can do. You can do um, biashnu, which is taking just two meals in the day. You can do ekashnu, which is taking one meal in the day. Upas means to take zero meals in the day. And then people who do things like atam, that's three days of no food or atai, which is eight days of no food. So it's really based on the person. And again, I stress this always, but fasting is not the only way to practice preparation. If you can't fast, that's completely okay. Again, taking niyams is one way of, of making sure you're still undergoing that same process, right? Technically fasting is restraint of food, but restraint of footwear and restraint of clothes, that's the same thing. It's all on the same level. So do the best that you can. It's okay if you can't fast. Um, man, Sanya, Sanya is doing upas. We have a lot of people that are drinking boiled water, ekashnu. Um, today, someone's 45th day. Oh my God, I hope you are in chatta. Um, and then that seems to be about it. So thank you everybody for that. That is really, really amazing. Again, for any tapasvis, I hope you're in chat. I hope you're doing well. As I know the rest of us are doing too. Um, it's a really, really amazing job. And for everyone taking niyams, same goes to you. That's a really, really important practice to be part, take part in. And it does mean a lot. And I'll cut, grab the last one off the chat. Aryan saying he's not going to do any video games or watch TV. Again, really, really great job. So before we transition back, I want to quickly show one more picture that I meant to show beforehand. Um, Dejanti will definitely be able to speak on this a little bit more. I know yesterday we had a question about what is Diksha and what does that mean? So we saw the picture of what um, 
Dipti Anti looked like before she took Diksha, right? But now we know that after she took Diksha, she became Hemishashi Marasai. And so what does being a Marasai mean? And definitely one picture is not enough to explain the complete breadth of the role and what it means and what the lifestyle actually comes up with. But this will be a good demonstration of some of the changes you'll be able to see visibly. So Tejandi, if you want to talk about some of the apparent changes here. Yes, Mathen Vandami first. Uh, and uh, this is just exactly after her diksha. Uh, so what happens is the whole process goes on like this, that in the morning, uh, we go to the Guru Mara Sahib. There is this uh, Bhagwan placed in the center. She is uh, going around Bhagwan, doing a little Kriya, just like our Samayik or Pratikaman. So all uh, the Kriya takes place. And after which she's finally given the Oghu. Now, what is a Oghu? Ogu is a, a, something like our charavlo, the stick with the woolen uh, strings. So yes, they have, uh, you can see this here. Can you see my cursor? It's right here under her uh, arm. It is, uh, a, a ogu is a stick which is covered with material when you take diksha. That is what they use, not the normal uh, charavlo that we use. And uh, yes, so uh, they use that and she is given that. And when she gets that, it's like she got the best thing in the world because she really wanted to leave the world and get into this monkhood and she finally gets it. So then we take her for a bath and we shave off her head. The first time it's always shaving, after which it is plucking off all your hair. Yes, it is very painful, but over time you get used to it. Now she is very, very comfortable with it. The first time it took around over three hours for all her hair to be plucked. And every Mara Seb has to get their hair plucked out uh, every six months. So it's twice a year. That is called a lot. And uh, yes, so we shaved her head and she wore these lovely clothes and she walked back. So you can see the Mendy, the uh, henna on her hand as yet, because this is just the first picture after her Diksha and look at the smile. She was so happy that day. And once she got this, yes. So this was my sister 10 years back. And um, remember, uh, I had said that Agar, they put uh, the books, if you will see under this here, there are her books that she's going to be using after Diksha. So that is also, uh, you know, kept with her and they are always in the front. The books don't go behind. Yes. Perfect. And so I had just one more point of clarification. I know yesterday we said they leave behind their possessions. They leave behind these materialistic or worldly things. What does that really mean, right? She's not wearing any colorful clothes. A lot of us spend so much time every day picking out what clothes we're going to wear. Oh, does this match? Do I like this shirt? Because it's my favorite color. She's wearing all white. She's not getting any choice in her clothes, like all white is what she's gonna wear. A lot of us take pride in our hair, right? People will spend hours styling it, getting it done. Um, boys and girls are like putting gel inside, whatever else, we wanna make it look good. She has no hair. So that's another thing that might bring us happiness, but she doesn't need it for her to be happy. These are all the things that she can leave behind and still be happy without. So that's like one of the, like, the biggest things to see. And I know it's hard to imagine, right? Like how can a person be happy if they don't have any of these things? So if you do go to India and you do have the chance, try your best to visit Amara Saib. It's crazy. You'll talk to them about anything and everything and they'll be smiling always. They're just so happy with what they have. It makes us almost think like, how come I'm not as happy as they are? They're always, always happy. Um, but sorry, that's just a word on Amara Saib. They're really, really amazing. I have a couple of cousins who are also Amara Saibs as well. It's been super cool to see what they've gone through. But that being said, let's get back to the lecture. I don't want to take any more time away from Tejalanti. So we can go ahead and resume and take care of the second half. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, I, as I mentioned, my sister didn't leave her smile from the day of Diksha and whenever I've ever after gone to meet her, the smile is kind of stuck, glued to her face at all times. And whenever you talk to her, it's been 10 years now and you ask her about anything and she says, I'm the happiest thing you know, in the whole world. So yes, you must meet Samara said, just like Harshita said. Uh, they are in a much, much, much more happier place than we are. Even though they have nothing that we call happiness, uh, but they have everything. 
yes uh, uh, also wanted to say wow lovely neons that everybody is taking it's amazing to see you know the first day we had only a few next day there were more and today there are so many of them who are uh, coming up and taking a lot lot many more neons and it's wonderful to see that this is a samvar kriya that is plugging the holes in the boat that is going to take us to the shore so this plugging of holes is very needed it is going to take us a long way in our journey and building us good karma so yes uh, now go let's get back to what paushad is paushad as i said is kind of a replication a short uh, uh, period a short span of diksha so in exactly what a sadhu would do we do it in one day um uh, of paushad so uh, one must also do the padilehan of the vessels that you eat in so mara saheb hoy to they do patra uh, the red bowls uh, that they do uh, have to eat in they do padilehan of that padilehan is means checking if there is any life in it any living organism in it maybe a spider or anything of that kind and we when we go to the person's house where we are going to eat we need to do padilehan of it before they serve us food in that plate then after we do padilehan we are supposed to groom the ground too because when we kind of did the padilehan if some of the bugs could have fallen on the ground they would still be there so after that we can't start moving because we might step onto them so we must take that dandasan that long stick with that you know woolen thing at the end and we kind of take uh, broom that place the brooming that place is called gajo we broom that area where we did the padilehan and we put it away uh, in a safe place where nobody would walk on it yes and if it is the monsoon of course we take this uh, thrice and uh, the rest of the eight months we do kajo that is grooming the place twice then let's go on to the last one that is parishta panika samiti that means nihar nihar means excretion parishta panika samiti again the word parishta panika samiti and this means nihar nihar means disposing so there is a particular way in which the stool needs to be disposed you can't use the washroom once you take diksha so similarly when you take paushad you're not supposed to be using using the washroom or flushing down things so there is a method in which you dispose stool you dispose the urine and also when they pull the hair that we were talking about that hair needs to be disposed in a particular manner if they you know they sew their own clothes right so the needle just in case it breaks then there is a particular uh, way a uh, process in which they can dispose of that if they use paper if we write a letter to them how should they dispose it all these small small things even the old clothes you know what they do with it they kind of use it till the they can they stitch it up and keep using it but after a point they make very very small uh, after that they make napkins and use it or use it for wiping the ground or something after it becomes completely unusable they make it into smaller pieces very very small pieces and collect them in a bag and give it to people like us or when they are going from one town to the other walking when they see a empty well or a big uh, ditch or something like that that is where they just drop the bag so that nobody is going to touch it nobody is going to use it and it can decant or de decay into the atmosphere and mix with uh, uh, the uh, environment you know so that is how uh, they dispose those things even the nail the used water in the sense they get food in something right so that food there is water they put water in it to wipe the bowls and they uh, in the uh, vessels that they eat they drink up that water and so are we supposed to when we eat in the plate that plate needs to be washed by us and drink up that water and uh, the bowls in which they get food not for us when we do paushad we don't have to take care of the bowls but yes mara sides 
the food in which they get their arms that water also needs to be washed and that water is kind of disposed and the, the calf anything that they have they are supposed to dispose it of in a particular manner now when they go out to dispose anything before they dispose it before they throw it on the ground they are supposed to say the word anujana jastago just remember the meanings of these things i'm sure these words are very tough and you won't get it in one one go but uh, it's always good to hear them we keep repeating these hearing these words and it, they will become a part of us so what does anujana jastago mean means we are taking permission to pour this thing on the ground so mara saibs don't do even the smallest thing without permission same way when we do paushad we are supposed to take permission from the tree or from the grass or the ground that can i throw this water here please because maybe that area belongs to some angel some kind of a vyantar dev who uh, says this place is mine and it, you know like supposing somebody comes and throws some dirt outside my house i wouldn't like it so wherever they dispose may it be the ditch may it be uh, in a uh, empty well or may it be under a tree if it is water or something like that so they will definitely ask permission and the way to ask permission is i can't see anybody here the meaning of the word anujana just go means i don't see anybody but if this place belongs to somebody uh, then i am asking your permission taking your permission and disposing this thing here so of course we don't hear an answer but we do this anyways and after we finish disposing it after we finish pouring the water near the tree or disposing whatever we want or throw whatever we want to throw after that we say vosire 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 three times which means thank you thank you thank you for allowing me to use that space to dispose of what i didn't need then comes there are some more rules whenever you leave the upashray whether you are sadhu or you are in paushad you have to say nissihi three times nissihi 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 means i am going i am going so the guru maharaj at the head in the upashray knows that you are leaving the house and they are aware that you are not in the upashray and so if you don't come back in the reasonable time they know uh, to really look for you they are not worried about you so yes so you say nissihi 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 three times when you leave the upashray and when you uh sorry when you enter the upashray and when you leave the upashray you say avastahi avastahi means i am coming back so i'm just leaving for a short time so avastahi means i am coming back and nissihi means that i have come back then you have to do a different kriya everybody is aware of pratikraman which we do morning and evening two in a day but this is a different kind of a chaitya vandan chaitya vandan is a set a process of sutras that we say in front of god to pray, uh, to kind of sing praise to him to get nice bhav uh, and uh, it's more like a sing song a praise for bhagwan so we need to do a little longer chaitya vandan and this longer chaitya vandan is called devandan and this devandan is to be done three times a day morning afternoon evening by a sadhu sadhvi or if we are in paushad so just imagine that day yes it's a, it's a lot of rules a lot of regulations a very very tough life that they live and if we want to practice this we should do it once we should try and take this paushad because this is our kartavya we are supposed to do it at least once in a year and imagine we have still not really tried it out so we must go ahead and do this one day paushad not if the whole day maybe you know go in at 4 5 in the evening so it's just for few hours and then you can sleep and wake up in the morning and you, before you know you're home on what do we sleep we sleep on a santhara it is again woolen for the same reason to save insects which may kind of creep and crawl underneath it you know some small ant or a a uh, mosquito or something like that and on that you put a bed sheet a white bed sheet this bed sheet is called uttarpatta and the woolen 
uh, small uh, material is called santhara okay and you must sleep on the left because uh, that is the best way to uh, digest food so every time you sleep you must try and sleep on one side and not flat and uh, it should be always the left side we are not allowed to use the pillow for the same reason air pockets inside the pillow and air life can get hurt then we must not stretch our feet when you sleep on the left side also you don't sleep straight you kind of sleep like you were in your mother's womb you press your legs your knees are bent and they are pressed towards your stomach that is called warm kukshi in the sense the same way as you were in your mother's stomach that is the best way to sleep and uh, before sleeping you are supposed to say one sutra kind of that sutra means that if i die in the night then everything that i possess i give up nothing is of my possession except the things that i'm sleeping on and i'm wearing so you are kind of giving up everything when you sleep just in case you pass away in your sleep and we always say that if i get up in the morning then i will reuse everything that is mine so that's the sutra that you say at night before you sleep so and that sutra should be said by us as a shravak even in our homes not only when we do paushad do we uh, say this sutra uh, we must say it always and also the sleeping posture that too should be observed at all times and not only when we take uh paushad it should be done even today when you sleep tonight uh you should sleep like you like a baby and turned on to the left we must always have cotton bud plugged you know those cotton balls plugged into our ears uh while we sleep not because there might be some sound and it would disturb us because every time a sadhu mara sahib or uh, in paushad a shravak or a shravika sleeps on the floor right as i said it cannot be a hard surface so we sleep on the floor so a insect could crawl uh, a centipede or something and get into your ear so just so that you are not hurt or damaged by any insect that could crawl into your ears so because of that you are supposed to take uh, cotton balls and plug your ears with it before sleeping one must avoid four types of vikathas now what is this uh, there are four types of uh, vikathas that is four types of discussions rajkatha that is political discussions desh katha means current affairs bhakta katha means food discussions oh i ate this today and it was so delicious you know what tomorrow i'm going to eat this why don't you make that or you know you go to that one's house to take gochuri tomorrow or i'm going to go to so and so's house in my pausha to eat so those kind of food related discussions should be avoided and stri katha stri katha means discussion of the opposite sex not only stri as a female but a female shouldn't be discussing the males or the males shouldn't be discussing the females or even female shouldn't discuss females males shouldn't discuss males so no kind of discussions uh, regarding all this should be done in a pausha we should discuss and talk only about religion and religious activities yes now let's go on to today's story to make this concept very very clear we are going to take the story of sudarshan sheet now before we get into his present life uh, as sudarshan sheet let's look into his past life in his past life he was a rabari kid in the sense he was a poor kid and uh, his name was subhag he was working at this one mas his master's house one employer's house and he used to take uh, the cattle of his employer to graze yes so one day while he was grazing in the cattle he sees one muni bhagwan one mara sahib and this mara sahib was in kausag mudra and had a very serene look on his face he looked so nice that a small child just kept looking at him and looking at him in awe like how how in the world can he he be so peaceful how is so much happiness and so much peace kind of reflecting on his face so he was struck by awe and he kept looking at him for quite some time and soon it was time for him to return back with the cattle so he comes back but at night too he couldn't help thinking about that mara said 
So next morning, again, when he leaves to graze the cattle, he decides to go to the same spot so that he could see if the Marasai was still there. And, and to his surprise, yes, the Marasai was still there standing in Kausak Dhyan. Again, he is just looking at the Marasai. Marasai was very unaware that somebody was looking at him because his eyes were closed, right? And once he finishes his kausa, bef before he could realize that somebody was looking at him, he just says Namo Arihantanam and flies away. He was a Charan Muni. And Charan Munis have this labdhi with which this kind of a power, labdhi means power. They cultivate such powers through penance and through help with the uh, devtas and everybody when they finish and accomplish this penance they kind of get these kind of labdis this kind of power so he had the power to fly so he flies off back to his own abode with uh, these charan munis generally li live on high mountains there's this high mountain called vaitardia and that's where they live so he flies off to his abode now this boy just heard the word Namo Arihantanam. And you know why Mara Sahib had said Namo Arihantanam? He had said Namo Arihantanam because he had finished his Kayot Sarg, Kausag in our language, but the right word is Kayot Sarg. He had finished his Kausag, so he had said Namo Arihantanam. Even all of us in our Pratikraman, whenever we are in Kausag Mudra, whenever we are doing a Kausag, once we finish, we must say Namo Arihantanam loudly. Reason being, when we say the Anatta Sutra, what is the Sutra Anatta? The meaning of that Sutra? That Sutra is kind of trying to say that I am going to be now doing my Kausag and in my Kausag, if I yawn, it's okay. If I sneeze, it's okay. So we are taking certain, certain um, uh, liberties in our Kausag. And at the end, we say Namukkarinam na paremi. Means till I do not say Namo Arihantanam, I will not finish my Kausag. So in Anatta Sutra, if before my starting my Kausag, I am promising that my Kausag, my Kayotsar will not be over till I say Namo Arihantanam loudly, then if we do not say that loudly, we are flowing. So we must, after the Kayotsar is over, may it be 20 Logas, 12 Logas, 40 Logas, or may it be even one nokar, four logas, one logas. Whatever it is, after that, we are supposed to say Namo Arihantanam loudly. So this time in the Samvatsari Pratikaman, all of us are going to say Namo Arihantanam once we finish the Kayotsar. So yes, this Charan Muri finishes his Kausar, says Namo Arihantanam and flies away. But to this small boy who knew nothing about Jainism, to him, this Namo Arihantanam, he felt are the magical words reciting which you can fly. So he tries to say it, Namo Arihantanam, Namo Arihantanam. He says this quite a few times. He concentrates and tries to remember it. Uh, but he didn't fly. So he is like a little sad. Okay, how come he flew and I can't? So reciting that word over and over just so that he doesn't forget it. Because the his employer was also a Jain. So he says, I'm going to go home and ask him what this means. So he keeps reciting that word and comes home. And when uh, his employer hears these words, he says, how did you come to know this? So he says, no, I met some Muni. And you know what? He flew away after he said this. So obviously, uh, his employer being a Jain totally understands and tells him, you know what? You met a very, very Mahapurush, a very important soul today. And you got a lovely mantra. This mantra will help you through thick and thin. So please remember it and recite it every day. And so he agrees. He remembers this mantra, recites it every day, day in, day out. And soon time passes, time lapses, uh, takes place. And yes, he knew the mantra. The entire mantra he learns from, the, uh, from his employer and used to recite it daily. Now, one day, uh, this whole town observed floods. There was huge floods and everything was being washed away. So even the cows and the cattle that he was grazing were kind of being pushed and pulled by the water. 
this small little boy he wanting to be very faithful to his master tries to pull and bring all the cattle back to safety he does bring quite a few back to the shore and back to uh, back to safety out of the way from the water that was flowing and causing flood uh, in the stream but in doing so he himself dies but while he was being pulled by the current of the water he was reciting navkar mantra and because of which he is born as sudarshan shet so in his next life he is born as sudarshan shet he's very rich he's very good looking very very handsome and he had a wife called mano uh, manorama now he also had a very good friend his name was kapil and kapil had a wife her name was kapila so now both these sudarshan shet and kapil were very good friends and they exchanged most of the things that they did in their entire day kapil was very impressed as how religious minded sudarshan shet was and he sudarshan shet used to do pausha this pausha that we are talking about on every tithi and he was a very staunch follower of all the principles of jainism so his friend kapil one day talks about his uh, friend sudarshan to his wife kapila and is saying you know what sudarshan my friend is such a beaut uh, such a wonderful person a very good heart is what he has and a very soft heart he takes care of all small and big animals as well as insects and he does poshad and you know he he went ga 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 about uh, his friend once the uh, once to his wife and kapila uh, kind of was very awe struck with what he, her husband had to tell uh, her about sudarshan shet and uh, kapil still continues and continues to tell her that you know he takes pausha then he doesn't even look he's so handsome but he doesn't even look at another female and he is so strong and he is so uh, loyal to his wife now that is what touched kapila she said he is so good looking and it is very difficult to believe that this such a good looking man could be so faithful to only one wife so she decides to test him so one day she sends a letter uh, to sudarshan shet telling him that his friend uh, kapil was not feeling well and had severe pain and was calling for him immediately so sudarshan shet he was very helpful by nature runs to kapil's house and goes inside the house and asks Kap asks kapila where is he where is he what happened to him and kapila starts laughing and says and locks the door and says uh, your friend isn't here he's gone out but it is me who called for you so and she kind of tries to lure him but you know what sudarshan he was very clever and he himself also starts laughing saying what really uh, you are trying to lure me seduce me uh but do you know i i am a new nap so i won't get seduced by you so she gets very angry and she kind of opens the door and lets him out of the house he goes back and uh, goes back to his wife doesn't tell her anything but just goes back and then time passes again soon one day this kapila was friends with the queen of that town the queen's name was abhaya so she was uh, uh friendly with this queen abhaya so kapila and abhaya one day when they were sitting in the balcony of the palace and talking away to glory that time manorama passes by with six her six children so uh, kapila asks abhaya because abhaya just smiles at her at manorama so kapila asks man uh, abhaya queen as to how do you know her who is she so uh, abhaya answers that this is manorama and wife to sudarshan chet you know the handsome man in the town well this one is his wife so kapila says are you sure because he is a new nak he, he how does he have a wife and kids six of them how come she so saying no nothing like that so she realizes that she was tricked by sudarshan chet so she tells abhaya 
ke you know what my husband really sings a lot of praise for him and he's supposed to be a very very celebrable person and uh, he is very staunch jain he observes all the pr- principles to the core so i'm giving you a challenge it's an open challenge if you can lure him to be with you so abhaya says oh i am the queen I, of course i take up the challenge she takes up the challenge that she is going to lure uh, sudarshan chet one day again time lapses and one day uh, it was a festival day in that town and on that festival day the king uh, had ordered everybody to meet in the garden outside the town so everybody the all the town people nobody was excused and everybody had to compulsorily be out in the garden to enjoy the function that day sudarshan chet uh, was excused because it was artham parvati thi means as i said one pacham two artham and two chaudas you are supposed to be doing paushal so sudarshan chet observing each and every kartavya of a shravak to the utmost was going to do paushal and he was so excused by the king and his wife Uh, says you know what she is not feeling well she's tired she's feeling weak removes this excuse and stays back the king happily lets her stay back and the others go off there was nobody in the town so the queen tells the soldiers to go and get sudarshan chet kidnap him and get him to her house to her chambers obviously the soldiers go there and uh, pack sudarshan chet in a sack and get them get him in front of the queen queen abhaya now he was in kausak dhyan he was in his kausak mudra he hadn't even opened his eyes when the soldier came and kind of picked him up put him in a sack so that nobody else knows what was entering the palace and opens the sack in front of abhaya but still Uh, sudarshan chet is in kausak dhyan he was not even bothered about what was happening to him he rather mustn't have even understood or realized that he was being kidnapped now uh, here abhaya queen abhaya tries to lure sudarshan chet once again but sudarshan chet was very firm and doesn't respond at all and soon it was time for the king and everybody to come back abhaya is scared that now she's going to get caught and so she starts tearing her clothes and starts screaming for help at that instant the king comes there listens to the entire story um the way it was narrated by queen abhaya who said that this sudarshan chet had entered this uh, her room her chamber and was trying to uh seduce her and so the king being angry orders him to be hanged and while he is being hanged he starts chanting naukar mantra he doesn't say i didn't do this in fact i was kidnapped i was brought here he says he doesn't utter even one word because if he did queen abhaya would be in danger she would have a black name people would not respect her anymore as much and so he keeps quiet even though he knew he would die he was okay to die but he didn't want queen abhaya to suffer at all because of him he felt it was the fault of his good looks that abhaya queen was trying to do all of this and so he starts counting naukar mantra and on the other side as soon as Man- manorama his wife hears about this even she being a staunch believer of jainism starts chanting naukar mantra both of them are chanting naukar mantra and you won't believe because of the power of naukar mantra of both of them the string split it breaks and a throne is made under him and he is kind of made to sit on the throne this throne was uh, made by the devtas the angels who are kind of guarding naukar mantra at all times there are 1001 devtas residing on each letter uh, of naukar mantra and naukar mantra has 68 letter so 68000 devs are uh, present and taking guard of anybody who is reciting any of the letters of navkar mantra and they came to sudarshan chet's aid and they helped him out and yes 
this is the power of paushad this is the power of naukar mantra so yes we must do this kartavya of ours at least once in a year just to take the taste of sadhu jivan of monkhood of becoming a, a sadhu or a sadhvi once in a year for just one day minimum so this is our day 3 end and uh, ભગવાનની આજ્ઞા વિરુદ્ધ કઈ પણ બોલાઈ ગયું હોય તો ત્રિવિધે ત્રિવિધે મિક્ષામિતુકડાઈન્ટલી fifth step so that is so much more closer to moksha so today again we are going to repeat our pachkan which will take us to the fifth step one more thing i wanted to tell you is uh, when we, uh, we do paushad but bhagwan when in his last life when he is going to take diksha in his last life he never takes paushad because he never steps on the fifth step he straight from the first jumps to the sixth fourth and then sixth he takes a jump from the first to the fourth fourth to the sixth but he never comes to the fifth step because he doesn't believe in giving up anything half heartedly because this paushad or this pachkan is momentary it is for a short time span as to the one that we decide bhagwan never believes in doing things half he believes in completing everything and so he takes a leap from the fourth to the sixth and there on the sixth sixth step means diksha so sarvavirti so that is where he goes and he completely uh, does away does away with all these uh, rituals i mean sorry with all these parigraha and all killing of uh, any kind of life or anything to the complete and so he jumps directly to the sixth step and avoids the fifth but still he knew we we are weak we are not so strong minded as, as him we might not be able to do sarva vritti we might not be able to live the sadhu jivan or the sadvi jivan and so he has prescribed this mid path for us the shravak jivan we cannot do away and not even be in the shravak category and so we must at least to the least do all the rituals that a shravak should do daily monthly yearly all the rituals that are prescribed for us should be observed by us to the complete because that is still only the fifth step and not giving up everything in complete like being on the sixth or the seventh step yes so let's fold our hands join our hands for the samvar kriya to reach the fifth step uh, let's do the pachkan dharana abigra pachkai anathana bhoganam sahasra garanam mahatra garanam savastamahi vatya garanam vosire vosirami um uh, shall i do the sarva mangal or if we can do a couple of questions first yes sure definitely sounds good so i saw a lot of questions came in today thank you guys for participating um so let's start from the beginning if one cannot do three fasts how can we do 2000 swadhyay okay uh 2000 swadhyay there are many ways to do this uh one is by doing a samaik and in that samaik actually not talking uh anything related to the sansar everything that sansar means worldly activities everything should be related only to religion uh so if you do five samaks you kind of uh, equal it to one of us so three of us is 15 samaks uh so if you do that that is one way second way is um, to kind of do read gathas any sutra which has minimum of 50 gatha that is the first sutra that comes with 50 gatha is vanditu so reciting any sutra uh, you know uh, any any sutra which is got uh, more than 50 gatha or 50 gatha is uh, okay for swadhyay and you have to do 50, read 50 gathas as many times as to equal it to 6000 
There's another way. The third way is by counting Naukar Mantra. We can do 6,000 counting. 6,000 Naukar Mantras would also uh, give us the same equivalent to six Upvas. 20 Naukar Valis is equal to uh, one Upvas. That is 20,000 Naukar. So 20,000 into six is uh, 6,000 uh, 6, uh, Naukar Mantras. So yes, these are the three ways in which you can do your prior strip. Perfect, thank you. Um, our next question, what is Kalpa Sutra? Yes, Kalpa Sutra is one of the most important sutra. And uh, if you're going to join us tomorrow, uh, I'll be discussing the entire Kalpa Sutra tomorrow. Kalpa Sutra is another name for Barsa Sutra. This Barsa Sutra is a part of the Dvadashangi. What is Dvadashangi? Dvadashangi is a the scriptures that were made by the Gandhars. Today I did mention Gandhars make the sutras. Everything is given by the by Bhagwan as artha, the meaning of everything. So Bhagwan gives these intelligent people, the Gandhars, just three words. And from that they make all the scriptures. Now this Dvadashangi has a little part of it in which we shall look at it in detail tomorrow a part of it which is called Kalpa Sutra and another name as I said is Barsa Sutra, Barsa, Barso meaning 1200. This Sutra has 1200 Gathas so the name Barsa and the meaning of it is Kalpa Sutra. Now to, from tomorrow we'll be doing Vakyans of the Kalpa Sutra meaning the meaning of the Barso Gathas is what we are going to understand from tomorrow. Perfect, yeah. And Kalpa Sutra is also something that is read every Purushan. Only in India, like in Acharya Marasa has to do it, but um, it is read during Purushan. It's a very good question. The same thing. Mm -hmm. um, is Poshat the same as Uptyan? Uh, not exactly the same, but yes, in Uptyan, you are supposed to take a Poshat. And this Uptyan is uh, of, uh, there are three types of Uptyan. One, the first Uptan is of 47 days, the second Uptan is of 35 days, and the third Uptan is of 28 days. In these uh, Uptans, you're supposed to do the first Uptan 47 Paushad, the second Uptan 35 Paushad, and in the second, third Uptan, you're supposed to do 28 Paushad. So the Uptan Kriya cannot be done without a Paushad. So yes, you can relate the two. But Uptan is a continuous uh, process of 47 days in which you kind of become um, liable to count a certain sutra. So the first Uptan gives you the right to count. The first 18 days gives you the right to count Naukar Mantra. It's like getting the degree. Like I study um, doctorates and everything. Supposing I want, I study the books of uh, becoming a physician. But nobody's going to trust me till I don't show them a degree, till I have not given exams, right? Similarly, if I don't have a degree, my Naukar Mantra is like I've taken it on my own and I know it and I'm so reciting it. It doesn't give me as much fruit as it would if I had done these 18 days of work done and actually got the Naukar Mantra the way I am supposed to. That is like kind of getting a degree, like a permission to count Naukar Mantra. So these Uptans are for different, different sutras. And to do the Uptan, Paushad is a must. Do Marasaib always have to wear white clothes? Yes, uh, that also will be coming tomorrow. The first and the last Tirthankar Marasaibs always wear white clothes. But the middle 22 Bhagwan, that is from Ajitnath Bhagwan to Parshnath Bhagwan, their Marasaibs, their sadhus do not need to wear white clothes. They can wear colorful clothes, they can wear silk, satin, anything that they please. But we, the first Bhagwan as well as the last Bhagwan, Rushabdev Bhagwan and Mavir Swami Bhagwan, na sadhus always are supposed to wear only and only white clothes. Perfect. Our next question, why do we touch a sadhuji's legs and they give us blessings? Okay, we uh, uh, do vandan to them. And the reason being, okay, a, a boy cannot touch sadhuji Bhagwan. Only a female can touch a sadhuji. A male 
can touch a sadhu bhagwan a female cannot touch a sadhu bhagwan so yes we do vandan it's a, again a set procedure a set ritual of two kama samnas and then saying one sutra and then one kama samna if he has some uh, position and then saying another sutra and uh, then one more kama samna so this whole vandan vidhi is to be done because they have these good qualities they have left the world we want to become like them because they are above us even if we are a true shravak doing everything we are still on the fifth step and if we are not doing all of that we are still on the fourth step and they are on the sixth or the seventh how do we gain these steps they are based on the qualities that we acquire right so if we have more qualities we kind of step up sadhus and sadhvijis are on the sixth and the seventh step ahead of us and so we bow down to them to get their uh, ashirwad to get their blessing let's do two more and then we can call it a day for today we will get to the other questions in future lectures um is there a prayer or sutra that we should recite every night before we go to sleep and after we wake up in the morning yes santhara porsi is a sutra Uh, that if you have a panch pratikaman chopri uh, uh, you know the book it's a red book it says mesana uh, panch pratikaman sutra in that you do have a santhara porsi sutra that should be recited every day but if you don't know that then there are adhar, um, you know small 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 stutis that are made uh, by others to make it easier for children and if you can memorize then definitely santhara porsi is the ideal sutra Perfect. And last question, um, Tejanti, you spoke about old and new clothes. Once you take diksha, who provides this cloth and these clothes? Okay. Uh, these days, we buy material from outside and wore out it to Mara Sahib, and they cut it to their uh, need from that whole. Uh, what do you call it? Taco. That that whole roll of cloth. That from the whole long cloth. Cloth. Yeah. yeah yeah so they cut it to their measurement and then they use it but in actual we are not supposed to be giving them these new clothes in the olden times the males used to wear dhoti and khesh and so that when they became a little older they would wear away to mara side they always used our old clothes and ladies used to wear these sarees and things like that so that is what they used for their clothing but nowadays that is in the practice we buy material from outside and we give it to them they stitch their inner clothes as well as uh, they cut the outer clothes the kapro the sado everything to their measurements and then they wear it great i think we'll, we'll call it a day for day thank you for answering all those questions and thank you guys for submitting them it's really great to see that you've been paying attention and participating in the lectures that being said let's do um sarva mangal and one thing i just want to quickly mention before i don't think everyone has realized but these lectures are really like worldwide right this is a opportunity that you won't necessarily get every year so remember to think about the value that tejandi is bringing to you this variation there are people in over 30 states in the united states watching these and people in over 9 countries who are also logged in which is a very very cool thing so just keep that in mind so our very our very big thank you um to tejandi before she gives us her own and no no completely my pleasure in fact it's an opportunity to be able to uh, read these vacants thank you so much uh, to the yda as well as neeta and sunni bhai uh, the sunrise camp committee thank you so much uh, for allowing me to do this and uh, to sarva mangal uh, sarva mangal mangalyam sarva kalyan karanam pradhanam sarva dharmanam jainam Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.